This is the fifth lecture for MA 1012. In this lecture we'll think about infinite series of real and complex numbers. A sequence is a list of numbers. Uh, so 1, 5, minus 4, 10 as a list of sequence of four numbers. But we're mostly interested in infinite sequences, so for us sequence will pretty much always be an infinite sequence. Um, so we could have 0, minus 2, 4, minus 6, 8, minus 10, and dot 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 going on from there. Uh, so it's an infinite sequence of, of these numbers, and um, we'll generally write the terms, uh, give them names like a1, a2, a3, and so on, uh, going on infinitely on off this way. If the numbers keep getting closer and closer and closer to a given number, then we'll say that, it's, that the sequence is convergent, and the number they get closer and closer and closer to is their limit. The limit as n goes to infinity, a n is l. That's the quantity that they squeeze in toward and get uh, and converge towards. And if it's not convergent, then of course it's divergent. So, uh, for example, uh, the simplest sequence we can think of that is convergent is just a sequence of threes going on forever. It keeps on being the number three, and that's perfectly al allowed. And of course, it approaches a limit of three because the numbers get as close as you like and stay as close as you like for as long as you like to three. They stay from they get toward close toward three, and they stay there from then on. Um, another example would be um, uh, the numbers one, one half, one quarter, um, one eighth, one sixteenth, getting smaller and smaller by half each time, and they converge to zero. That is to say. No matter how close to zero you want them to get to, they get to that close and they stay that close from then on. Uh, well, from uh, from some point on, they eventually get as close as you like and stay as close as you like to zero. Another example: um, if we look at two minus two, two minus two, so hopping back and forth, that doesn't converge. That's divergent. So divergent, usually, in, when we talk about something being divergent, we have the idea in mind that it means spreading out far and far and far away from somewhere. But it really doesn't in this situation. It just hops back and forth between 2 and minus 2. But it's still divergent because it isn't convergent. There are uh, trickier examples like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on going up the positive integers. That's divergent because it doesn't uh, conver converge to any particular number. We might want to say that it that it converges to infinity, um, so uh, we'll write that as saying that the limit as n goes to infinity, a n is infinity. We remember some rules for how to manipulate these things. If we had a sequence given by a formula, a n is something like, say, n plus 2 divided by n squared plus 1. Um, then the numbers are getting small. Why? Because when n gets larger, remember it's n is 1, 2, 3, and so on. Sometimes our sequences will start to 0. Usually they'll start at 1, something like that. It could be a 0, a 1, a 2. In this case, it's a 1, a 2, a 3. Um, this guy actually got, does go to 0. Why does it go to 0? And the reason is is because when this n gets very, very large, n squared gets much larger than n. And so n squared plus 1 gets much larger than n or 2. And so the denominator is getting relatively big. Another way to see that is just to divide by the biggest term. When we look at all the terms in here, we see the big one is the n squared. So let's just divide all the terms by it. A n is n plus. Let's re rewriting the same formula. Now I'm going to divide every term by the biggest one. Uh, I can divide by n squared. 2 over n squared divided by n squared over n squared plus 1 over n squared. So I've divided every term by n squared in the numerator and the denominator. That doesn't change the result because I divided numerator by n squared and also denominator at the same time. Rescaling both the numerator and denominator by the same amount doesn't change the result. But you can see that when n is very large, well, we could simplify this a little bit, maybe 1 over n, so 1n one, one over 2n's. Um, this is 2 over n squared, this is 1, and this is 1 over n squared. Um, and so when you make n very, very large, you can see this goes to 0, and you can see this goes to 0. 
you see this goes to zero, so it becomes very, very close to zero plus zero over one plus zero, and so you can see that it converges to zero. We can try to apply the same reasoning with complex number sequences instead of real number sequences. If we consider a complex number sequence, something like 3 plus n plus i n squared a n is uh, this guy divided by 6 n plus 7 i. Now we have real n imaginary parts. Now it helps usually to try to understand division in terms of looking at the um, the conjugates. Um, so we could uh, we can take the the conjugate of this guy and multiply both sides by it, uh, divided by numerator and denominator by it. So six n minus seven i n is uh, always assumed to be one, two, three. So real. Um, so this guy divided by six n minus seven i, we multiply all those out and we should get something that's a little easier to manage. Um, so uh, we can expand all that mess out um, and get, uh, what do we get? So 18 n, uh, and then plus six n squared, plus uh, six n cubed i, and then, uh, the numerator's getting a bit, a bit long, um, Maybe I'll write it somewhere else. Um, uh, equals. Uh, so it's going to be 18n plus 6n squared plus 6n cubed i minus 21i uh, minus 7ni and then minus i times plus i is 1 so plus 7n squared all divided by this guy gives us 6 squared is 36 and then 7 squared is 49. Um, ah, sorry, there should be an n. There should be an n squared here. Um, okay, so that gives us a bit of a mess, but at least we can now split it into real and imaginary parts if we have to. Um, so we can see what does it look like in real and imaginary parts. Um, so a real part looks like 18n plus 6n squared that's imaginary, that's imaginary, that's imaginary, plus 7n squared. So 7n squared and 6n squared should be 13n squared, I hope. Um, and then um, all divided by 36n squared plus 49. Real part. And then the imaginary part is all the imaginary stuff. There's 6n cubed times i minus 21 times i minus 7n times i. I hope I'm getting it all right. Um, 36n squared plus 49. Um, now what we can see is that this should be I think 13. Um, we can see now n squared over n squared is going to be 1. So if we divide by the largest factor is the n squared. Um, 18 over n plus 13 divided by 36 plus 49 over n squared. Um, this guy's going to 0. Sorry, this guy's going to, no, sorry, it's going to 13 over 36. Um, but uh, this, is that right? Yeah, okay, 13 over 36. But this guy um, is not behaving very nicely because if we divide by the largest power, which is the, the n cubed, uh, we get 6 minus 21 over n cubed minus 7 or n squared divided by, divided by n cubed, you get 36 over n plus 49 over n cubed. That's no good because this denominator is going to go to 0 while the numerator is going to go to 6. And so this guy, um, this doesn't work. It diverges. Okay, so we can manipulate the same sort of story with complex numbers instead of real numbers. One of the most popular techniques for dealing with um, divergence and convergence of series is the famous L'Hopital rule. Um, which we know from calculus. Now, um, of course, in, in calculus you have uh, nice continuous functions and you're dealing with limits as variables go to, as x goes to something or other. Uh, you take some continuous function and study some limit. But you can often do that here too. 
um, you can often deal with with sequences by saying that if you have something like um, n plus 2 over n squared plus 1, you can write it as um, as f of n, where f of x is going to be x plus 2 over x squared plus 1. And so now we can use L'Hopital on x, and we simply get the obvious observation that at the limit as we make a variable x go, get to be very small, say, or very large, let's say very large, um, f of x is of course the limit as, let's call this a n, as n gets to infinity of the a n's. In other words, we can calculate the limits this way by calculating them in terms of continuous functions. As long as we can find a continuous function whose values, when you plug in x to be an integer, turn out to be an integer n, turn out to be the, the values that we have for our sequence. So in that case, we can actually use L'Hopital's rule as if we were dealing with a continuous function problem, as long as we can find a nice continuous function that actually takes on the required values, the required points. So, for example, we can use L'Hopital, and so again, it's one of the favorite rules of many students. Um, so we can use L'Hopital in a simple situation where we have... Um, um, uh, a sequence a n is uh, n squared e to the minus n, uh, n squared e to the minus n. Um, we can say that that's equal to f of x, where, sorry, f of n, where f of x is the nice uh, continuous function, um, n, uh, sorry, x squared, uh, x squared e to the minus x. So if I want to study the limit as n goes to infinity of the a n's, that's the limit as n goes to infinity of the n squared e to the minus n's, that'll be the same as the limit as x goes to infinity of the f of x's, which is the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared e to the minus x. You can see they're really just the same expression, but this one's only allowing integer values of n, this one's allowing continuous values of x. Um, but after all, the, if, if one's going to drift in toward a limit, so is the other one, and they're going to turn out to be equal because of the behavior of the, the function being continuous. So um, so what we're going to do is simply to calculate out these two. Th this one, sorry, calculate this one um, instead. And to get that to work, as we make the x get to be very, very large, we can write it as, say, x squared on e to the x. But we know by L'Hopital's rule that because both of these are going to infinity, okay, this numerator is going to infinity, the denominator is also going to infinity. So we want to do a sort of infinity over infinity type calculation. L'Hopital's rule says you get to differentiate uh, the numerator and the denominator. So the x squared can be differentiated to a 2x, and the denominator is still e to the x. But that didn't help much because it's still going to infinity, and this is still going to infinity. So to deal with that, we differentiate another time and 2x becomes 2 for e to the x. This is still going to infinity, but that's okay because this is fixed at 2, and so the whole thing, since the denominator is going to infinity, the whole thing is going to 0, so the limit is 0. Another favorite example of a, of a sequence that where we know how to calculate the limits um, is when we have something like we talked about 1, well, 1 1 half, 1 quarter, 1 eighth, 1 16th and so on. Cutting a number in half each size, it obviously goes to zero. You keep cutting something in half and in half and in half, it pretty quickly gets very, very small. Um, and we have more generally that we can we can look at a um, at a so-called geometric uh, sequence, which is some number and then the same number times some factor and then the same number times the factor squared and then the same number times the factor cubed and so on and so forth. Yeah, obviously if the factor, um, if r is uh, has size less than 1, then it goes to the, the, the sequence goes to 0. And if r has size bigger than 1, then um, and a is not 0, then it di diverges. Um, so we can understand those sequences pretty easily. In our next lecture, we'll talk about infinite sums and about uh, the su summation notation for infinite sums.